Waste partnerships have played quite an important role, albeit a small role, um, because there aren't that many who have been very successful to date. Um, but partnership working, coming together, becoming more efficient, sharing the expertise, sharing the resources is vital as budgets continue to be cut. Um, and so we can progress forward and be much more effective rather than working alone. It's, it's ridiculous. You should be coming together and, and using that shared resource. Um, I think Jane's absolutely right with this, whether it's the, and we can extend this to the whole supply chain, whether it's the MRF regulations and the need for councils to work really closely with their waste management contractors, that's one form of partnership. If it comes to trade bodies coming together, you can think of things like the Fresher for Longer campaign, yeah. where there were a number of bodies that came together there to try and deal with a single issue, i.e. how packaging could help food waste reduction. You have material specific issues, uh, there'll be a Plastics Please campaign starting this September mm -hmm. uh, with a whole number of, of bodies across the supply chain being involved and then you've got Metal Matters as well, an established campaign where you need that, that mm -hmm. connection between industry and councils to be able to get the results. And on councils, which is why I've done this a little bit last, Kent is out there. Uh, we've got not all of the answers to all of the questions. Uh, but one thing is clear, we've gone into this partnership because we want to, as a set of councils, we want to continue that, that partnership, but it's got to be based on the money. Financially, there are issues. Um, having those financial constraints bring their own problems in having the investment necessary to set a partnership up. There's apathy still out there, um, and there is still a feeling that actually individual local authorities know best and they can carry on working business as usual when you know that's really not the case anymore. Um, local authorities are having to be much more sort of forward looking in terms of their long term survival in a more of a circular economy sort of setup. It won't just be about bog standard collection from taking material from A to B. Um, and I also think there's leadership lacking um, in some partnerships or they haven't invested necessarily in somebody to drive that partnership forward and that is vital, it can't be underestimated. You need somebody with the right power, the right authority to kind of take that lead and steer them and bring those different partners together to work forward and that's not always there. I think you, you've got to go back to the very first question which is why do we want a partnership at all? And, and many areas may have started off with the question of what governance do we need before looking at why do we need the partnership? And the ones that tend to be the more successful Again, they've not solved all the problems, but they are more successful, are the Greater Manchesters, are the Kents, the Somersets and the Dorsets, to some extent, where they've said, what is it that we want to get out of working together? Usually, it is an improvement in performance. Usually, it is uh, sorting out issues that are intractable alone. Um, uh, could be around lobbying. And certainly for a, a set of areas uh, like Kent, uh, much better that we use our clout punched according to our weight, sometimes above it, with other bodies like government influencing their policy, like the supply chain. It's very difficult to get hold of, for example, um, somebody who works corporately in a single head office for a global business when you are a small district council. Much, much better from their perspective to go in with, with much more clout as a partnership together. In agreement, not surprised sadly, um, it's the way it is at the moment. Um, I'm working on a project for CWM on where waste management fits in the whole circular economy and it's just not on the agenda it's not you know we're so behind we've heard what's come through from Europe and we're not even having the right discussions let alone following through with any actions yet so you know we're kind of 10 years behind at the moment which is it's very depressing as chairman of that that session in putting the question to the audience I gave a follow-up which is to say do we think that there is some good beginnings here some some green shoots of progress by the political parties Without commenting myself, the audience said it for themselves that there was still a whole load of red votes mm. saying that no, they haven't quite, they haven't quite grasped uh, the agenda. Mm. Uh, uh, yeah, so I, there's a lot of work to be done there. Of course, with a general election coming up next year, that could be the opportunity for us to, to restart again from 2015 through to 2020 and see where we go with this issue. Um, I think it's symptomatic at the moment that we have had flatlining. We've had some authorities actually who were dropping. We've had some who've had to withdraw aspects of their service. Um, unfortunately, I think we may see more uh, uh, kind of retractions of a comprehensive service um, as things are cut. So it is worrying. We don't have the political pressures. We don't have the strategic or policy pressures as we've had before in terms of you know pushing us towards targets. It's almost like people have kind of put it on the back burner a little bit, um, and it, it could carry on, come spiralling down, uh, which I think came across from the audience. You know, nobody wants to see that. We don't want to sort of admit that. Um, but there is that degree of uncertainty now whether we are still heading in the right direction.
there does seem to be an England issue here mm -hmm. um, when you compare it to the devolved administrations, certainly with, with Scotland and Wales that do seem to be able to get beyond that 45%. So if there is a particular England problem, then we do need to be looking at the areas where that exists. Areas like Kent, which is the third biggest tonnage um, overall from um, all of the different uh, authority areas across the country, uh, we are very likely to get there. Uh, we, we didn't flatline, and of course that's the other issue that's being talked about at the moment, are we flatlining at 43%? Uh, Kent last year went up to 46% from the year before 41, and that has a lot to do tying in with the first question about our performance and improvement uh, agenda and also our financial savings. But whether everybody's uh, really looking at it in that way, mm. uh, I would question. We're kind of optimistic in the world of ways that we're moving forward and, you know, conferences like this, we've come together because we are very committed to keeping the debates going, to keep moving towards more of a circular economy. So, you know, I think as a body, we're very optimistic. I think sometimes we don't necessarily have the tools and we don't have necessarily the political support, um, particularly in England, to get there. But, you know, we'll keep at it. I'm optimistic overall because I think that as a country we will get towards where the EU sees its ambitions. We may resist for a little while. We may ask for more time on, on EU laws coming into um, British legislation. But if, if coming to a conference today and seeing industry colleagues coming together mm. uh, and giving their views very positively, I felt, all the way through the day, even if the votes themselves seem negative, I actually think that's a positive thing because we have people in the conference today who care about these things and want to be part of an industry that's vibrant and that moves forward.